Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sunday Run podcast. We've had a good couple of weeks of the podcast. Um, I thought I was just going to do it every second week, but I found a new lease of life. I'm absolutely loving life. I'm loving the podcast and I'm just going to make the time and make sure we keep rocking up every week. So today we've got a solo podcast and I'm very keen uh, to get into it. We've got um, a pretty like big episode ahead, a lot to cover. Um, and we're going to go over a few like different topics, a few se- more serious things and um, also have a bit of fun. As usual, you guys uh, prevailed with the Q and A section. I got heaps of messages, heaps of you know questions coming through. I'm not going to be able to answer them all, but I'll answer as many as I possibly can. For those watching on YouTube, we're in a bit of a different setting today. I thought we'd go a little bit more relaxed. Um, we've got the city behind us, and uh, yeah, we're just going to sit into this podcast and and enjoy it. If you are running, well, fantastic. Um, I'm here every step of the way with you and I'm going to help you through your run today. Uh, so put me in your ears, forget about the run and just think about what, uh, what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully you've started, you've, you've gotten moving and, um, and you're feeling good. Sometimes at the start of runs, you feel a bit heavy. Um, that's really normal. Don't stress about it. Often I find the first kilometer is the hardest. Uh, once you get through that, you're kind of good to go. What's happened recently? Lots has happened. Heaps has happened. Um, I ran my first marathon. And whilst we have chatted about it on the podcast, we haven't spoken about it just one-on-one, you and I. So I thought I'd just quickly run through that. It was a while ago now. I did the Great Ocean Road Running Festival. Um, It's actually 44.6 Ks uh, and absolutely brutal. Huge hills, huge winds, a lot of rain. But I had the boys with me. I had Charlie Crozier, who started Volley. He's a founder. Um, and also Zach Pavloy. Sorry, I've cooked his last name, but Zach, also a legend. He's like David Goggins. We got it done, and I'm really glad we got it done because originally I was actually going to do the half marathon, and I went for for coffee with, like, Zach and Charlie. Like, we were just hanging out. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do the Great Ocean Road half marathon, Um, doing it with Brooks, and, and can't wait. Like, really looking forward to it. They're like, mate, you have to do the full I was like, oh, no, I've only got like two months until the race. Like, I'm not ready to do a full. And they're like, bro, you're like a running influencer. You literally, like, there's no other way. Like, that's embarrassing if you're doing the the half. If if you were me, like, it's embarrassing if you're doing the half. I'm not saying it's embarrassing to do the half. It's a huge achievement. But I've literally dedicated my whole life to running for the last couple of months. So it makes sense that I do the full. So I bit the bullet. I was already enrolled in the half. I hit up Great Ocean Road Running Festival. I said, guys, can you get me into the full? They said, yeah, mate, no worries easy done and then I rock up to the start line Whew, I really really it, it, it really hit me that I had just agreed to running 44.6 k's and the best thing I did for this whole running race was not educate myself on the course I'm so glad I had no idea what was coming I'm so glad I didn't know the amount of hills the wind just like the genuine terrain and how brutal it was so um, had no idea. Luckily, Charlie knew and he was kind of keeping it pretty quiet. Um, and then I found out about 30 Ks in. So about 30 Ks in, in, in most runs, that's where it get, like, gets really serious. It's like first 30 Ks, we were holding a good pace. We wanted to keep our pace at least under four, point, uh, four minutes 58. And we did that like pretty good. We were hitting like 430 for a lot of Ks. Um, including like the hills and stuff. And we were chatting, just having fun, fully carved up, fully um, caffeinated and, and hydrated. And, you know, the first 30 Ks were like, this is, this is the fun part. Let's just enjoy it. We're chatting about life. You know, we're chatting about, um, you know, like girls. Uh, we're chatting about like relationships. It's, it's just like a really enjoyable time. I reckon 30 kilometers and one meter in, it just hits like a truck. Like chat stops, all right, boys, it's time to lock in. We absolutely locked in, got into it, and I kind of like, yeah, I, I started to get really sore and stuff. I felt my left hammy start grabbing. Anyway, we, we got through in the end, as you saw, like managed to finish it, really proud of myself, really proud of everyone around me. Um, and yeah, all in all, just like a fantastic experience. Came out of it, like a second I crossed the line, I was like, no chance am I ever doing a marathon again. That is me done. Apparently that's very common. Um, so sure enough, it's not me done. I'm going to be doing another marathon. I'm thinking the uh, Melbourne Marathon. I think it's in October. Uh, that'll be 
42 k is like just a normal marathon and it's flat so i'd love to get a quick time for that thinking four oh sorry three hours 15 maybe um yeah if you guys could let me know what you think i might be capable of that'd be great so post marathon really lethargic pretty um yeah it's like just took took me a couple of days to really find my feet uh it's it's hard because like my my body wasn't too bad like my body held up well but energy levels, man, were just like cooked. My heart rate was a, an average of 174, which is a lot to hold for three and a half hours. Um, so I was absolutely cooked for a couple of days after it, but slowly found my feet and I allowed myself like a week, a week and a half of just like sleeping in, um, having a couple of beers. Like I literally had a few midweek beers. That's, that's absolutely wild. You know, just catching up with friends like, yeah, we'll just go out for a beer. I just felt like I was like working my nine to five job and like just like knock off drinks. It was actually really fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so obviously towards the end of that week, so, so we're, we're about a week and a half out of um, the marathon and I started to feel a bit like, all right, I need to, need to start locking in. Um, so yeah, I've, I'm kind of, that's where I'm at now. Like I've started locking in again. I've had a couple of days of, of like really good sleep, um, waking up pretty early and like gymming or like training twice a day essentially and, and getting back into the content grind um i know it's this sound like it's such a, a weird world to 99 percent of the people listening but that is my life and that's kind of like what i do um so yeah and then and then i suppose it poses the question of of what's next like what am i going to be running for next um i've got a few questions later about like running goals and it's very relevant to this because if you don't i've found if i don't have a running goal then i'm not as uh, motivated and you know i can't get as much done I, uh, what else has happened? I, I got a, an Apple Watch, an Apple Watch Ultra, which is great fun. It's a, it's a, it's a good piece of kit. It's, it's, it, it is genuinely like having a phone on your wrist. And I've gone from the Garmin Phoenix X6 Sapphire to the Apple Watch Ultra. Now, the Garmin was fantastic. Like, I didn't stop using that for any reason in particular. Um, I just like a change up of things sometimes. And like, it's on me to be informed. I've had so many questions from people saying Garmin or Apple Watch, Garmin or Apple Watch. And I can't really talk about that unless I have tried both. So, I mean, I've done, what, five years of a Garmin. Um, now I'm going to do however long with an Apple Watch. And, you know, maybe I'll go on to something else after that. But at this stage, I'm really enjoying the Apple Watch Ultra. I can see how it would be ideal for the everyday person. Um, there's a few comments there like, oh, just wait until battery life. You know, battery life's not going to be good for like ultra marathons. It's like, mate, 99% of my audience is not running an ultra marathon. I'd say 99.5% of the audience are never going to run a like ultra marathon. And it's not really the target audience necessarily. Um, now I may run an ultra marathon and I'll probably do it with an Apple watch and I'll let you know how that goes. But, um, that consideration in regards to it isn't, I mean, yeah, I don't really take it into account. So, uh, but yeah, I've, I've been really enjoying the Apple watch. A couple of things I've noticed with it. Um, it's just a phone on your wrist. So notifications, um, you know, like any point of the day, it's like, bang, it, it's right there. You see it and you're like locked in. So I'm trying to figure out how to mitigate that. I don't want it, be, want it to be on like do not disturb the whole time, but I might try and limit the notifications that come through on my watch. Uh, I need to learn more about like the, the features and all of that because um, it's, yeah, I feel like I'm an old person. Um, but yeah, so really enjoying that. I got some cool new shoes coming soon through Brooks, um, and, and maybe some new apparel as well. So, uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that side of things. I think you like quite enjoy, I get a lot of questions about, you know, what clothes I'm running in, like what's the best socks, what's the best shoes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's like, it's, it's a little bit materialistic, sure. But it's fun to like, let you guys know what I'm wearing and, and you know, if you've, you've got the money, then you might be able to get it as well. If you're running, keep going. I reckon you're about a K in now. And that's fantastic because that's the hardest part over. Now you've got at least two Ks of pure enjoyment and you can absolutely lock in there. I've always said, you just halve your runs. If you're running 10 Ks, all you have to do is run five and then you've got to get back somehow. So like kick that issue, kick the can down the road and like that's an issue for later. So just focus on running to the point of turnaround at this rate, okay? Just, just keep ticking that over. If you're doing like, a really long distance run all in one direction, well, just halve it. And then like once you're halfway through, honestly, it's bloody easy mentally from there. 
Um, a lot of people think the mental, you know, fortitude has to come in in the latter stages of a run. I disagree. I think it's in the earlier stages. So, so keep going. Topic one today is an interesting one. I wanted to get into like getting new people into fitness. Um, I had a lovely message a month or so ago and it was in regards to, so I got my mum into running through all this, this running content and she's been going at it ever since, like literally absolutely loves it. Um, you know, she's not the quickest, uh, maybe not the most efficient runner, but she's just getting out and moving and, and that's what matters. I had a guy message me saying, mate, my mum is obese and I want to, like, how, how, how do you get your parents into fitness? How do you get them into running? Um, now I'm lucky with my mum. She's had, uh, you know, plenty of years prior of fitness and, and, you know, it's always something she's preached to us. So to my sister and I, so, um, it, it wasn't too hard to get her into it and show her routine. Whereas someone who is, who hasn't done any fitness their whole life or hasn't played sport in, in, in earlier years, it's quite hard to get them into that routine. Uh, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't try. So I wanted to get into today, which is like getting new people into fitness parents, friends, and just like little tips on, on how to do it. I think people come in trying to help others. Let's say you're helping your mum. You go, all right, mum, I'm going to write you a, a fitness program, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On Monday, you're going to do 2Ks. Tuesday, you're going to do a walk. Wednesday's rest day. Thursday, you're going to do a gym session. Friday, you're going to do 3Ks you know, Saturday, you're going to do like another gym session. And the feeling behind that is if you skip any of these days, it's all over. Like, I hate you. You're, you're the worst ever. How could you disrespect my gym program? Take that out of it. Okay. These gym programs need to be flexible or any, any fitness program, it needs to be flexible. And okay. If you like say to your mum or, or whoever you're coaching, if you're going to, if you don't want to run 2Ks today, that's okay. Like I, ideal world is you do the, the session that I've prescribed you and run the 2Ks. But if that's just like not on the agenda for you, then let's scale it back. Why don't we just go for a 30-minute walk? Why don't we go for a walk and get a coffee? Why don't we do something that's still getting you out there and still part of this routine, but it's not as brutal as the, the session you prescribed? So that's, that's first thing. And, you know, I think a lot of... Um, young men especially get into this mindset of like everyone wants to be trained like they're David Goggins or everyone wants to be trained by David Goggins where it's just like shouting, Navy SEALs, swim, kick, 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 get out of bed, let's go. Not the case. That is for, for most people, they do not want that and they might think they want that but in the time they probably don't want it. So think longevity with these plans. Think longevity with uh, – fitness and and how you can in, like put this into someone's life and and make it a part of their whole life and they don't they're not gonna you know do a, a six-week program and then throw it all away it's a it's a hard thing to do but it's all about the slow set steps another thing i've found really really helpful is selling the dream now you got to be a bit of a salesman here and that might sound a little bit sleazy like you're a sleazy car salesman but it's not the case. This is, this is for their benefit. It's almost like telling a white lie. Like this is for their benefit and they're going to need it. But sell the dream of like going for coffee walks and not getting puffed. Sell the dream of going for a jog with their friend or with you and like you're, you're knocking off 5Ks, you're feeling great and then you can go and, you know, do whatever, whether that's get a coffee or go for lunch and stuff. Sell the dream of being a fit and active, healthy individual and – they're going to be so much more on it. When times get tough, they can look back to it and go, okay, yep, this is, uh, you know, this is why I'm doing it. It's because I want to get to this stage. Eventually, they're going to get to this stage and like fitness is a whole new thing. I got, um, helped get a mate into fitness and he was once overweight. Now he's in like the most incredible nick. And he's always said like the trick was just trying to get him addicted to the gym. Once I got him addicted, stand back, Matt. Like, he's teaching me stuff. We, we literally train together. He's like, no, like oh, no, just squeeze, like, you know, squeeze your lat a bit more or, like, do this in the movement. Like, how good is that? So get them addicted, sell the dream, and stand back and watch. Um, and I don't think you, you'll ever feel more of a sense of achievement than changing someone's life through fitness. I don't think 
there's any better gift you can give to anyone than dedicating a lot of time and saying, I'm going to help you get through this difficult stage in, in your life in being unfit or unhealthy and I'm going to dedicate all this time to like making sure you're going to be all right. So, um, yeah, this is a section more for people who are, who are training, uh, people who are struggling with fitness. Um, and then for those who are, who are struggling with fitness, then slim chance you're probably listening to, this, listening to this podcast, but if you are, that's fantastic and you're taking some great steps forward. Um, I guess it's about surrendering, surrendering yourself. Like you're just going to need to bite the bullet. It's going to be uncomfortable, but long term, like a little bit of discomfort is going to help future you. And it, it, it's, it's only that. It, it, that's all it is, is a little bit of discomfort. I had a footy coach say um, to me one year or to, to, to the whole group, like, are we dead? You know, it was like after a 2K time trial. It's like, yeah, that sucked, but are we dead? Like, no, we're not, we're not dead. It was a bit uncomfortable and for that brief moment it was painful, but we're not dead. No one's dead. It's, it's okay. We, we get on with it. And often with fitness, within two, three minutes, you're feeling better again and the pain goes away. So if that's cardiovascular pain or, you know, you've got a bit of like sore legs or something, the pain will go away and you are going to be okay. So I guess that's my little, little take on, on getting – new people into fitness and and if you are a new person like what you should do if you are running keep going you're doing great we are with you every step of the way and you're probably a fair way in now you might even be close to turning around um that's cool that's uh that's a fair chunk of the run and that means it's almost home time and home time for me means i start thinking about strava and I start thinking about running as fast as I possibly can. So lock in team, uh, maybe hold your horses a little bit. Just make sure you're getting the breath in, get, getting the air in. Um, keep your form in good condition and keep chipping away. Right, what's next? Still got gotcha. you. If you're still here, we've got a huge mailbag ahead. We've got a huge Q&A section. And the first question is in regards to an Instagram post I did earlier this week. It's from an absolute legend. He says, after being... So so for those that don't know, I um, left 9 to 5 Fitness. I put that on my story. Uh, sorry, on my Instagram. Um, it was a beautiful post and it went... Uh, yeah, it's just like a nice way to end it. Someone said, after being bought out of NTF, were you... How motivated were you to prove yourself right? Did it make you question yourself as a person and wonder if content was the right path for you? Tough conversation. Um, yeah, mate. So after I left NTF, like, was I more motivated than ever? Yes, to an extent, but there was also like a level of panic. Um, I've essentially just, you know, like I've left what I've my, my work for the last three years and I've got to figure out what I need to do in life. Um, and like... Going to uni certainly wasn't uh, – well, I'm, I'm at uni, but like pursuing my university degree or the degree I'm working towards because I'm very slow and uh, not great at academics um, wasn't like something I was too keen on. I thought I had a lot of talent and um, understanding at least or more so than others in the social media world. So I thought, all right, what can I do to um, get a bit of job security at least for the next year and then also like – capitalize on my skills and it was clear to me that I wanted to work in social media at some organization whether that's a, a sporting world and or whatever um, and I actually ended up getting a job at the AFL and it was fantastic like such a great group of people um, and I, I worked there for a year and I was able to work from home I was working on all these different things it was really cool to see how a big corporation works uh, and that is so different to how high to how I had been working for the last, you know, three years. Essentially, what I noticed was like the beauty of being a young small business is how flexible you can be. Like I'd think up a post, let's say for, for NTF, or I'd think up a post for like my personal account and then you can just put it out. With the AFL, I'd think up a post and it'd have to go through 20 eyes. And it's like, well, that, by that point, and like I was bottom, I was bottom, I was getting people coffees. So by that point, like, you know, the post has passed and no one really cares it. Um, but yeah, it, it was like a really interesting way to go about it. And, um, that just gave me a level of like stability for a good year. I had, had a bit of an income. Um, I had a task almost every single day. I had a, like a reason to wake up and a reason to, you know, like 
continue continue like you know pursuing my dreams so that was fantastic and that kind of gave me a buffer now in that time I was also able to work on my personal brand and my personal brand was just me like I don't have I didn't have a business or anything I was trying to drive necessarily uh but yeah so it it, it was really hard and I I had to transfer from going like posting on on NTF to like posting on my own personal accounts and I really remember that being quite a difficult jump I was so concerned with what people thought I probably only had well, not only but I had about 8,000 followers and I didn't feel like a legitimate you know like personality in regards to the fitness world so that was difficult to do but once I made the breakthrough I had and I still have the best support network all of my mates were just like mate absolutely love what you're doing like this content's fantastic. They'd give me, you know, oh, I, I don't like this content as much as you do this. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really handy for that. I mean, on top of that, it was fantastic because I was able to continue working on the, on the podcast with Gab um, up until just recently. And honestly, like that was fantastic because it really gave me like a voice um, and it kind of connects you to a bigger brand and, and a bigger account, which is so like, it's really like fulfilling, but also legitimizes you a little bit. Um, and that's absolutely how I felt. So uh yeah it was a tough like year to an extent but the people around me were were super supportive and um i can't thank everyone uh who was involved with that enough genuinely um it was it was fantastic so uh once i got to kind of um finding my own feet and and i was able to make money with my own social media obviously got managers as well started getting brand deals and, and that just like that settled everything um, then I started doing this running content and of course here we are today uh, the running content kind of blew up for me and I've just been able to kind of keep building on that and find my own name in the fitness world you know I didn't want to keep repeating what I'd been doing in the past I didn't want to step on anyone else's toes either I don't need to be a you know a powerlifter or a bodybuilder or like super athletic footballer like I just wanted to be like my own person and I think I've managed to, to find my way in, into that now. So thank you. So that's honestly a beautiful question and hopefully it's been answered well enough. Continuing with this Q&A, we've got um, heaps of questions. Now, these are just randomized. I've gone through and screenshot of the best ones and I'd say there's about 20 or so. So just sit through this um, and just try and enjoy it. Like there's, there's no particular order. Uh, but firstly, if you are running, keep going. I'm with you all the way. And I absolutely, I, honestly, I love you. If, you're, if I'm in your ears, I love you and someone loves you. This one here, hello, headphones with battery that will last for four hours. Well, oh, it's a good question and I don't really know to be honest, but I've been using AirPod Pros. I've enjoyed them. Um, just They just get the job done. I've mentioned in my Apple Watch video, like the beauty of kind of the Apple ecosystem and same with the headphone, the earphones. Like you just, you open the case, you put them in, they're connected to everything. <laughs> it's like, and you can just listen to music. So um, prior to the Apple, I was with Jabra. Um, I was actually, I think I was sponsored by them. It wasn't like a monetary thing, but like we got free product and um, yeah, and they were just like great headphones as well. So it would be worth checking out Jabra as well. Um, I'm no longer sponsored or anything. So I don't really care if you do or don't. Um, but Jabra or AirPods have been the way for me. What I would say though, so four hours, like battery that will last four hours. A big thing with my marathon, which actually didn't work out so well, but that was just because of my stupid mistakes and not downloading music. But a big thing was like not putting headphones in for the first 30 Ks. Hold out on music for as long as you can. And this is just something I'm starting to learn. And these are kind of the mind games you can play with yourself that are just going to make the run a little bit better when it gets tougher. So I'd say, let's say, I mean, four hours, I assume that's for like a marathon or like a, a you know, trail run or something. For the first 20 Ks, do your best to not use headphones and do your best to just like sit in your thoughts. And yeah, the first two Ks are like crazy. There's all these different thoughts going through your head. It's really hard to settle, but just give yourself the chance. Give yourself the opportunity to sit into your thoughts and I guarantee you'll get a lot better. I'm sorry, it probably didn't answer your question about um, headphones with battery that will last four hours. But um, yeah, I think it's uh, important to really think about that and start utilizing your music accordingly. Next question, I actually shared this to my story because I thought it was really sweet. 
Uh, what's making you smile this week? You're making me smile this week. Honestly, the people are making me smile this week and also um, my friends and family. I, every, every week, oh, I, I always talk about it, uh, especially after a couple of beers, but like my friends and family are literally everything to me. Like the, the, the support I've had, not just this week, but, but previous weeks has been incredible. Um, you know, I've, I've had rough weeks in the past. I've had a, a bit of a rough one this week, nothing too bad, but you can always just lean on them. And I love it when it works both ways. I've, you know, got friends who are going through shit. There's like, if they're going to expect me to open up to them, then like I expect them to open up to me. And you know, that, that's been a, a real element uh, throughout this week and, and the last couple of weeks. And um, it always makes me smile when I can just like sit down and, and have a chat to them or just sit down and go out for, for dinner. It's something since moving out of home, which has become like very relevant to me is like quality time with friends. So I used to never like necessarily go out for dinner with mates or just go out for like Yochi or get like ice cream. I reckon three times a week now we will schedule time to like go for dinner or, you know, go get a Yochi and just sit down and we literally just chat, whether that's about something deep or whether that's just like service level combo, just that quality time. It's literally what makes me smile. So um, that's what's made me smile this week. And I absolutely love all my friends. So I said chances of a Sydney meetup. There is a chance. I'm actually booking flights to Sydney soon, potentially. So if I go to Sydney, I will do a meetup. We'll go for a run um, and get a coffee. Uh, but very much looking forward to that. Ooh, this one's a good one. And I don't really have it off the top of my head. But worst advice you've received? Um... I mean, oh, it, there's, I've received advice like situationally that has turned out like that would have clearly not been the right way to go about it. Um, but there's nothing that really like pops in my head straight away. I guess, you know, the, the, the common thing of like, uh, like succumbing to what everyone thinks and not that people like give you that advice, but you know, maybe the advice of like, oh, just be careful of that. Don't say that. Or even the other way, like you should post now, like you should say something about X and, you know, that'll like, that will stop everyone worrying or that'll stop uh, everyone questioning something. It's like, that is not actually the way to go about it. And, um, you know, I might've had that advice throughout my life and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that is so like gray area, but I don't actually have, can't really think of a proper worst advice I've received. Sorry, that's a shocking answer. Someone, this might not be a question. I think it's just a comment. Couldn't run 1K without stopping and now 12K on Sunday. Booked half marathon in October. Also love how you talk to runners that are listening to your episode while they run. That was from Simone. Thanks so much, Simone. Um, that is why we do it, isn't it? Uh, whether you are able to run 12Ks now, maybe because of some of my tips or, or other people's tips, like just hearing progress is literally everything. So thanks so much for listening and and. To everyone else listening, thank you. Another one from the man that or the lady that asked um, what is the worst advice I received. I've got your love languages. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, easy. Another one here is what are your love languages? Good question. Not very running focused, but happy to, happy to get personal, personal with you lot. Um, I definitely think my love language, so love languages is what, is it what I like to receive or is it what I like to give? I mean, I suppose they're kind of hand in hand, but I, I like touch very much. I, I, I hate it when I'm with someone who like hates touching me and stuff. Um, and, and not like sexually touch, but just, just like, I like a hand, I like to hold hands or like put a hand on like their leg or whatever. Um, so that's like very clear number one for me maybe quality time is the second one um and then there's like what are the other ones you've got gift giving and words of affirmation oh maybe words of affirmation it depends how i'm feeling i notice if my if i'm like more anxious or like my mental health is is, is not as great then like words of affirmation is very kind of like <laughs> like i need it um, but I, I actually, I can get that from other people, not like from a partner. So number one for me is love language. Second is probably, um, quality time. Hopefully that helps. What else is there? 
So acts of service, quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch, communication, expression of affection and love. Yeah. So it's like the main main four, main five. But definitely, yeah. I don't know. The, the love language is like completely – I definitely think it's something you kind of get more used to as you get older and it's like more relevant as you get older. Like I never knew what a love language was until I was like 23, which is last year. Um, so might speak to my previous relationships breaking down, but that's okay. Um, any ambitions to do any other endurance based events, Ironman, etc.? Yes, definitely want to do an Ironman one day. I also would love to knock off an ultra marathon. Um, I think for the time being though, like I want to get my content more focused on like shorter efforts, you know, like five K's, 10 K's, 15, 20 K's. Anything under that, I think that, like, honestly, just from a, a numbers perspective, it hits the algorithm a whole lot better um, and it, the content does a whole lot better. But I think that is the direction I'm going to go in the next couple of weeks slash months and then I'm going to do the Melbourne Marathon. And then after that, yeah, definitely an Ironman, like a half Ironman or a, um, an ultra marathon. Future plans for Sunday run. Do you think you'll branch into run coaching? Love the pod. Yeah, like running coaching is definitely something I want to get into. Maybe not directly from me. I I think we can find better people to coach you guys. Like I I love running and I, you know, want to help as many people as possible, especially like beginners. But for the more advanced people, I'd love to be able to set up a platform, whether that's an app or, or a website or, or just some kind of, you know, ability to, ability to communicate where we can have really good run coaches who are, you know, certified and very knowledgeable uh training you guys in a in a really kind of accessible um palatable format so i have huge plans for sunday run and i promise they are in the works i can't speak too much about it at the moment but um sit tight with us and and uh you'll see very very soon next question from amelia what is your favorite running shoe hmm I ran the marathon in the Brooks Hyperion Elite. It's their carbon-plated running shoe. It's like for quick times and stuff. My legs felt held up really well. I had a little bit of a knee, but we've realized that's because I paddle with my left leg a bit, so it's not the shoes. Um, they are the sexiest shoe alive. I don't care about Alpha Flies. I don't care about it, like any, you know any of the Adidas. In terms of sexiness, I reckon the Brooks Hyperion Elite is number one. It is such a beautiful looking shoe and it just feels quick as um when you pull them out the box they're like foamy and they smell like a i don't know a science lab you feel like a you're a rabbit um so yeah the brooks hyperion elite for quick running i love the brooks ghost as well like just for every day-to-day -day stuff um yeah that's like anything brooks obviously i am sponsored but those two would be like my number one What's your opinion of using salt to hydrate? Yeah, it's essential. Uh, before the marathon, I would be at cafes churning salt into like my little glass of water. Um, and then after the marathon as well, drinking salt. Um, I got these Hydrate HYDR8, I think it is, um, sachets. And they're just like s s flavored salt, essentially. Put them in a drink, knock it back. Electrolytes. Stops you from cramping. So if you haven't done your research on salt, I'd highly recommend that. If you're starting to pick up your you know, training and stuff, salt is going to be the key to keeping you, um, stopping you from cramping and, and keeping your energy high. What's your happiest moment this year or proudest moment? Oh, great question. <laughs> um, this year, happiest or proudest moment? Man, I, I, I really have no idea. Like I couldn't put it on anything in particular. I've, I've honestly, I, I can't put it down to one, but but spending time with friends is number one. And like, I've, I've had such a fun year with Tom. Like we spent so much time together just in, in the house and stuff. And like just days like that um, is probably, probably makes the happy, me the happiest. In terms of proud, yeah, it's, it's more like seeing mates succeed and stuff. I think that's uh, number one for me. I'm sorry, I, I, I should have thought this through beforehand and I'm sure I'll think of something just after we turn the camera off, but I'll have a better answer for you one day. How do I get a chest like yours? Firstly, thank you. Um, I've been training chest for a fair while now, and honestly, I think 
I'm somewhat genetically lucky with my chest, but also um, when I was first starting out in the gym, I was hitting bench like three days a week. Now I don't recommend this because you might like do your shoulder. I was lucky enough that I didn't do my shoulder or get an inch, a shoulder impingement. Um, and honestly, it just like blew my chest up so much. I was repping out like 120 pretty easily on the bench. Um, I think my max bench is 140. Um, that was when I was a beefcake. I was a little bit chubby. Um, so yeah, just like hitting bench. Honestly, I love doing bench press into an incline dumbbell press. Like doing those two and four sets of each is, wow, you're gonna, it's, you, your chest is going to grow. So do those. What kind of coffee do you have, Lewis? I'm a skinny cat. Strong skinny cat is my coffee order. Tom and Harris says, are you okay? Um, mate, I'm actually living the dream, to be honest. I'm, I'm more than okay. Um, I'm loving life. Do, does being shirtless all the time give you more likes? Surely it's winter all over the country. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually a really good point. And that's why I am including this. Hundred percent. Like being shirtless on Instagram gets more engagement, um, but I think it's something I want to be more conscious of going forward. Like, I'm gonna start like forgetting. Like, fuck the engagement. Honestly, like, if I get you know less likes on a post because I got a shirt on, then whatever. Um, at least I'm staying true to myself, and uh, you know, like, it's not like sexually driven content. So, it's a really good point, and. No doubt I get more likes for being shirtless, but hopefully you're going to see more content of me with a shirt on soon because I just I just feel like that's, you know, the right step uh, in being a more mature content creator. What's the longest distance training run you did for your marathon? I think it was 30Ks, 32Ks maybe. Um, felt more than enough when I got to the run. Um, and I remember thinking at the end of that 30Ks, holy shit, how am I going to run another 12 after this? Thoughts on running dates, wild. I mean, if you find someone who goes on a date with you and a run, props to them. I think you two are made for each other. I've never done a running date. Not sure that's going to be on the cards. I've been asked on a few running dates, actually. Um, I'm, I'm more of a, a sit down and, and coffee or, or, or get a drink kind of guy, personally. After the marriage, you feel like you need to set another running goal to stay motivated 100%, um, I think, Everyone needs a running goal. Why do you look 50 here? Um, that's in regards to the story I uploaded. I was in my KPMG kit. Uh, I look 50 because I'm bloody <laughs> bloody stressed from all you people and the, the what you all put me through. Um, hopefully I look younger over the next coming weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for listening and sitting through this one. Um, if, you, if you've been running, keep going or great work. Uh, honestly, you're... You all inspire me and I love seeing you tag me in stories when you're going for a run. Um, I love seeing like your Strava uh, achievements and all of that. So keep doing that and let's keep building this community. We've got some Sunday run stuff coming up soon. So stay tuned on all of that. Um, I love you and uh, keep running. Cheers, bye.